Okay, I'm going to show you the, um, the scale uh, method that I've used or I learned to use from a friend of mine uh, from back in the late 70s. He built bamboo rods and, and other composites, or composites and bamboo rods. Um, and I have a, uh, a graphite, it's a Fenwick graphite. It actually is not a fly uh, rod blank. This blank is a, um, a spinning rod blank. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do this. Now I do have this set up with a clamp here. Mine's a little bit more sophisticated than what you may have um, at your, at, you know, at your home if you want to do this measurement. Let me go off camera here just for a second, and I'm going to grab a um, a tape measure. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put your rod on the floor and put it up against uh, a wall, so that when it's against the wall you'll be able to take a tape measure and put it, put it against the wall and then measure the distance from the wall I already know what this, the length of this one is so I'm just going to show you just for uh, just for demonstration purposes here the length of this rod, and I don't know if you can see it or not, uh, the length of this is 61 inches. And where you measure to, to, to get your measurement on the fly rod, to get your weight, is you measure from the, uh, the front end of where your cork is, cork or EVA foam or wh wherever the beginning of the actual exposed rod section is. That's what you want the distance from, as precise as you can get it, you want it from here to the, to the actual tip of the rod. So what we're going to do is, well actually, you, using this, this tape, let me, let me let you know how you can do it at, at your home without having clamps and charts and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, and it may help to have a person help you if you don't have a good tape measure that will stand up on its own. Like, like this one would. Okay, so um, what you're going to want to do is, first thing you're going to want to do is, is set, your, set your rod on a, um, on a table and then put some books or something on it to hold the rod out straight from the table. And then at, when it's setting on the table, what you're going to want to do as it's cantilevered out here, you'll want to take your tape measure and bring it up to where it meets the, uh, the tip. That way you'll get the, uh, that, that's where the calibration starts. Now this isn't on a, I don't have it weighted down there, but, but you'll, you'll understand once your rod is uh, weighted, it's not going to be doing this sort of thing here. And then you'll be able to set your your tape measure uh, precisely to the height of where the um, of, of where the uh, rod tip is. Okay. Now, once you get that, um, what you'll do is with the uh, the calculations here, and I'll put them in this video somewhere. Is kind of like B-roll, but what what I'm going to do is instead of using a table, I'm going to clamp line into this uh, setup that I have here. And then what you're going to want to do is it, you're going to want to take your rod and you want your guides to be facing down. Um, the only difference would be if you uh, if you do this, if you build rods. If you build rods, then um, what you might want to try and do is find out uh, where the spleen or the spline or the backbone of the rod is um, by putting some, there's no, this is with no guides, okay? But you would put your tip in there. You wouldn't put it in permanently. You wouldn't uh, set it into place, but you would just slide a tip on there and still be able to use your weighted, um, uh, your little weighted device here to find out where 
you want to put the guides. And what you do is when you, if, if you want a fast rod, if you, if you want, the, when you cast out and the, and the line's on the water and you go to pull, you can load the line up really well with it on the water. But when you go on your back cast to throw, you're, what's going to happen is uh, if you have the stiffness of the rod on the front side, then it's going to pick up really ha heavy and fast. But on the back swing, what happens is there's no resistance. The water gives resistance. The air does not. Okay. So when, you, when you're on your back cast, uh, you're going to want that backbone to be stronger like in this direction. So you don't want as much deflection back this way. You want it this way. So you want the softer end of the rod, the softer end, to have the eyes on the softer end. Okay, because the water is going to load, and you want the line to, ro to load when it's on its backswing. I hope that makes sense to you. So when you go like this, if, if it's a soft rod, it's going to go back further, and you might be able to cast, but it kind of, kind of uh, throws your timing off a little bit. Can it be adjusted? A absolutely. Does this really make, I mean, is this something that you have to really go buy on anything? No. Um, because a lot of the rods that you buy off the shelf at like sporting goods stores um, or even some cheap department stores, you, you, you almost always are going to get a rod that is not the weight that the rod is classified at. And almost always the cheaper rods, they're not going to worry about whether you're picking up on the fast and it's fast side of the rod or the slow side of the rod. Because as you twist the rod, what happens is, it, as you twist the rod, it's going to go down, and you go, as you spin it all the way around, it'll go back up. So again, what you want to do is you want to find the soft end where it's on its lowest side. That's where you want your guides to be. That's the soft side. That's the side that's going to be on the water. When you pick it up, then that's where the line is going to be pulling from the other side of your rod. Okay, so with that being said, what you're going to want to do with this little bucket, I have some small, super small split shots so I can get a, a very, uh, very close reading. So I'm going to load this up with some split shot and, and what we want to do is uh, put the uh, tip, the, the um, the bucket on the tip. You can do this with. Um, I got way too much in there. Okay, so you, you can do this with a paper clip through a uh, baggie and do the same thing. All you need to do is get uh, get the weight of whatever you're using to bring the rod tip down to this to this part right here. So what you're going to want to do, right now the rod is at the very top of this chart. We want the rod to come all the way down to here at 6.1 inches. So we're going to go ahead and load this up, bring it down, and we're pretty darn close there. Maybe one, we'll put one, one in at a time here. And one more, one more. If it bounces around on you, just put your hand just below it so it kind of helps it uh, stop that bouncing. All right, so one more should do it. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> okay. So we're at 6.1 uh, on the chart. So now what we need, need to do is take your little bucket off with the weighted bucket, okay? And you're going to want to weigh everything. If, you, if you're using a baggie and uh, a paper clip, you'll, you'll put the baggie, the paper clip, and the weights on what I have is a, um, a postal scale. 
If you have any other kind of scales around, you can use those too, but it has to measure in grams. So we're going to go ahead and turn this on because I put everything on there. And it comes to 18 grams. Okay, so what we're going to want to do now is take that 18 grams and divide that by 6.1 and we come up with 2.95. We're actually going to just bring it right up to 3. We're going to say this is, uh, is 3 that we need to take on the, sh on the chart. You go over to the ratio chart and 3 um, actually shows this at a, a 7 weight. Like I said, this is not a fly rod. It is a uh, it, it is a spinning rod converted to a fly rod because I wanted a six foot rod on some of the creeks that I fish. This thing will set a hook without me having to strip set or anything like that just because of all the backbone that it has in it. Um, but it, the, the same calculations and everything works out exactly the same for fly rods or whatever, or whatever you're using. The only reason why I, I wanted to know um, on this what rod or uh, what, what the weight of this rod is, which is, like I said, almost a seven. It was right out of seven. So I'll use, I will use a seven, um, a seven weight line on here. And it'll cast really well. I could probably take it up to an eight weight line, uh, but because of it being a short rod, I'll probably just leave it at seven for what this, uh, what this formula calls for. And um, I already know by putting on, I've, I've actually had a seven weight on it. So I just, I got lucky really. Um, and it casts really well. This, this rod, it's only a six foot rod and it, I can't get super long distance like I would with my nine six rod. Um, but it, it still, it still gets the line out there as, as far as I want in some very narrow uh, creeks that I fish for smallmouth bass. Anyway, that's the way you uh, get your, the, to, to check the weight of your rod, because sometimes when you buy rods, it might say a six weight, but it actually might only be a five and a half weight. It might be a six and a half weight. It might be a seven weight. Um, but you, if you want to find out exactly what size your rod is, so that you know what size line to get for your rod, uh, that's what you do. Now, if you go into a regular fly shop, guys that have been selling you know, premium rods over the years. I've never measured like, you know, the Orvis rods, you know, their high end ones or any of the other high end rods that it costs six, eight hundred dollars. I would think that those rods, they do balance them out and they label them properly. Um, and you probably don't have to worry about that or concern yourself with it if you have those kinds of rods. But if you pick something up at like Kmart or <laughs> Uh, at Walmart or you know Dick Sporting Goods or something like that, where you're only paying fifty nine, you know fifty nine to hundred dollars for your whole outfit, you might want to go ahead and, and do this because the line that came with it may not be balanced correctly for you to get the best performance out of the rod. It's not always the rod; it has a lot to do with the line as well. And I'm hoping that this helps you out. And if you use this method and you find out that your rod is spot on, let me know in the comments below on this video. If, it's, uh, if your rod is off, uh, let me know in the comments of this video. Um, there are other ways, just to uh, say here, there are other ways to get these measurements that, are, that may even be more accurate. But this one here is the simple one, the simple method, uh, the simplest method that you can use to get the information that you need just so you can select the proper line for your fly rod. This is Mike. Until the next video, we'll catch you later.